Dylan Fan steadies himself as he readies for a journey overland, a journey to a military helicopter pad, a shot at salvation. But it is a long shot. He still needs to get off this lot, away from the power plant, and he also has to hope that he hasn't been exposed to anything truly life-threatening. His torso still aches, and his limbs are a little bruised. He is determined, though. And only an hour into this horrific day, it is time to get underway. Kia ora, Legionnaires. Rikon here, and welcome back to Cataclysm, Dark Days Ahead, and to our short survival series, where we join Dylan Fan here outside of the nuclear power plant. We still have a little ways to go before we're actually off of the property, and there is even more of it <laughs> up in this direction here. I think we're going to be sticking to the outskirts as much as possible. I am tempted to see what's going on with this great big train over here, though. It does look quite damaged. I don't think there is going to be anything of use on it. And it looks like it just leads back into the facility, a direction that we don't want to be going. As things are bad in there, surely things are better outside. <laughs> Maybe not. We can see a zombie soldier, actually down towards the southeast at the moment. Once a soldier, it is dressed head to toe in combat gear and carries itself rather steadily for a zombie. It is hostile and it can't see our current location. But oh, I was going to say whether or not it can get us, I don't know, but yeah, no, the door is open, the way is clear. So let's get moving. Um, <laughs> yeah, we've managed to break its line of sight with us and ooh. That is a vehicle over there, and it's in good condition as well. Well, well, the parking garage might provide for us. Yeah, that's the building that we're looking at at the moment. So, let's be careful with this barbed wire. We're going to smash it with our wrench, and let's just clamber over towards this vehicle. I mean, oh. Oh, wow, that's, <laughs> that is quite the wreck. Look at that. Wow. Yeah, um, we should still be able to drive around that, though. Do we want to drive, though? I mean, I, I guess if we go around to the west, uh, we can make it down towards the helipad. We will have to go past the military roadblock. Maybe we'll just kind of edge up to there and see how bad it is. I mean, we have to find out if this vehicle is going to go at all yet. Maybe. It's got diesel, it's got battery, and the security system is damaged the dream the car battery is draining though so if we do start this thing we're just going to want to keep it running for as long as possible all right hatchback what do you got for us ah fails to start the engine is faulty okay let's see what is it going to take to get this thing mended it's a faulty starter motor faulty but not broken maybe there is a chance we can get it going let's try again and again, no such luck. I don't think we're going to be able to acquire a starter motor. Not so easily. What do we got over here? A register? Yeah. Some hidden items. I mean, we'll go and have a look around. See if there's anything of use here. Just money. We don't need that right now. I think that's the same zombie soldier that we can see at the moment. Okay. Well, it looks like we might be doing this on foot after all. Because this wreck... That's not going to provide us what we need. No. Well, we might as well check the back of the vehicles. See what the items are. They're probably just going to be wrenches. Yeah, and spare wheels. That's not going to help us. It looks like maybe someone was trying to sort this out. There's a few jacks and lug wrenches around here. But I think for us to actually take a starter motor out of here, it would take quite a bit. Yeah, pile up. Yeah, it's just, it's just a whole mess of stuff. Let's check this vehicle. Extinguisher in the back, okay. But yeah, no way that that is going to go. Unfortunate, unfortunate, but that's that's okay. I was thinking we were going to have to travel on foot anyway, and that seems to be the case. There is another helipad that's a little bit closer, but it's across these swamps. We might be able to make that, or rather, you know, head up this way first. I think that's what we're going to do. Let's just follow the road along. We can't see any other zombies other than that soldier. And you know what? 
Ooh, that actually looks like a vehicle up there. That looks like a freaking Humvee. Okay, we might be in luck. Is this more of the... Ah, uh, it's the hazardous waste sarcophagi. So, kind of a part of the plant. Vehicle? You look like you're in... Ah, uh, kind of a damaged condition on the inside. Let's see. I mean... There is a mounted M249, which we might be able to, um, use. Maybe. Okay, um, damn. The seat's completely destroyed on the side that the controls were on. That sucks. And there's nothing else in here, but we might be able to take one of... <laughs> one of the machine guns off the roof. Maybe. Maybe. We can unload and we can reload it. Can we remove it? I mean, how difficult is it to unmount it? This one's in a little bit better condition, by the looks of things. Uh, we need rifle skill to be able to do it. We've got the strength to do it. It doesn't require any tools, but I guess we just don't know the mechanisms to actually release it. That's unfortunate. <laughs> Damn. Well, I don't think there's any way that we can... I don't think there's any way that we can practice that. Rifling? Like, what do we need? Oh, yeah, no. We need a rifle and we need an aim game target practice kit so ain't gonna happen what i would give for a rapier or some fencing tools huh no we're doing this with our wrench in hand i think my friend okay mood is very bad right now craving alcohol that's the other thing that i forgot to mention at the start of the last episode yeah um, Dylan Fan is an alcoholic. We have the shakes right now. Um, and that's, that's affecting our dexterity by a lot. That's why it's as low as it is. I was a bit concerned with how low everything is and the withdrawal is affecting our intelligence and our perception currently. We're also lit up. We'll turn off that light. Don't you worry. And we have a general weakness. The weakness is a little worrying to me we're going to take one of these Prussian blue tablets we might have been exposed to radiation back there yeah oh boy let's let's hope this is okay uh, we're also going to check our bandages cool our torso is as good as it's going to get right now we're going to bandage up our right leg and I just I don't want to waste them right now we're dying for a drink, if only we'd had a beer. That is something that we definitely need to do. I don't think we're going to find a beer at a tree farm. But that is paramount on Dylan's mind right now. Maybe, maybe they'll have some at the helipad. Who knows? We need to push on for now, though. Um, but, oh boy, yeah, our strength is low. Not great. Yikes. Okay. Bad, bad mood. Addiction is rough. We haven't seen anything out of order along the trail. Looks like it's continuing up towards the north. And it looks like we've got a river bank up there. We're going to have to go through a few groves. But we should be able to cross over out the forest and maybe towards this helipad. I think there's a chance that we might be able to find a road. Surely it's not out there by itself. But then again, it is a helipad. That might be the case. Let's not step into the bushes. We'll actually turn on auto travel mode just so that we can move a little easier through all the different trees here. Mindful of everything else that's around us. Always looking for trouble. We're at the edge of a swamp now. And there is a bullfrog. It can see us and it's fleeing. It's just a regular sized frog, thankfully. <laughs> Nothing so large yet. I don't want to be hanging out in this swamp for all that long though, so... We're just going to continue on a little bit further. And looking at our map now, our mini map, we can see that there is a river here and there's a bridge heading over it. Okay. Well, let's get onto the road. And then we're going to start to travel down towards this helipad. We're dying for a drink. I know. Believe me. We'll try and make it happen. And you know what? We might be able to. If the helipad is a bust... Looks like we've got a little bit of a town over here on the other side of this river. One thing at a time, Dylan. Let's get a little bit closer 
Optus helipad, keeping our ears open. <laughs> we do have, you know, poor hearing, which ain't gonna help. But looking down this way, uh, that's a zombie soldier. That's not gonna help us. And there is a mil-spec searchlight. We can see spotlights from those on the ground. Now, as an experienced player, spotlights and turrets usually go hand in hand. And Dylan's smart enough not to just walk up to a military facility, but at the same time, he is a little desperate, you know? So we'll get a little closer, just kind of spying what's going on right now. The fact that the zombies are still alive leads me to believe that we might be okay. Generally, zombies and turrets don't go together all that well. Looking inside, we've got a military pilot in there and another zombie soldier and what looks like a decent armored personnel carrier. There is some damage to the inside, but the seat that the controls are at are working seemingly. Security cameras on the outside. It's a hell of a vehicle, but of course there is trouble. Okay, well... Oh boy, all those searchlights are on them right now. Yep, let's just back up, move away from there, and of course turn off the mining helmet as well. <laughs> I think we're going to have to go through these houses before we try and make any kind of progress towards this. Especially with all of those zombie soldiers down there. They are going to have good protection against anything we can throw their way. Let's walk up the bridge. We're going to head across towards this town. We can already see a few zombies on the other side. Okay. Yeah. And they can also see us. The first is starting to make its way up towards us. It is a zapper by the looks of things. So we don't want to be hitting that with our metallic wrench. We might be able to just try and make a break for the inside, for the house. Let's start to run. We need to be managing our stamina though as much as we can. We can see a number of dead around here. Let's move. We want to get away from them as quickly as we can. They're starting to close in on us. Okay. We've got a locked door here. We can get through this glass door though. Let's get it open. Okay. All right. Now, we're probably going to have that one that's outside following us. We just need to be ready for that eventuality. We're going to slow to a walk though, and I'm actually going to go down to a crouch. If we can stay lower, the chances of us being spotted are a lot smaller. Damn it. The zombie child over there has seen us peering through the window. I'm still going to try and close this one to no effect. We've already got something in here with us. I'd love for us to be able to get a drink, but that ain't going to happen. Oh, you no, know, you know what? They just smashed straight through, but I don't think we heard it. Our poor hearing is really quite poor. We didn't even hear them smash through the windows here. They're already inside and we are in trouble. So let's work with that. We're going to run and we're going to go out this window here. We can't close it behind us, unfortunately, but we just got to keep on moving. The other is close behind and what? Okay. Looks like there were a few zombies hanging out here, maybe? No, there's just splatters. Oh, it's a beaver, or it was a beaver. A few of them. Looks like they might have been pummeled by this meteor that crashed into the ground here. Well, down by this home, we've got uh, a brainless zombie. It's going to have a harder time tracking us. That's good. We might be able to work with that. No chance of us getting any of these windows open, I think. We need a door. However, heading out towards this main street might not be the best move for us. Another thing that we can try and do is climb the downspouts. I don't know if that's going to be a good call or not. Oh yeah, our breath is not doing good right now. Our stamina is down to next to nothing. We're just going to take a second, see if we can get some of our breath back. We're not being tracked right now. We catch our breath. Okay. Just keep breathing, Dylan. Just keep breathing. Okay. Oh boy, something caught us then. Tough zombie. Smash through that top window there. We did not hear it coming, but we can see it and it is barreling straight towards us. Okay, we're going to go back, running towards this brainless zombie. We're going to see if we can just make our way into this home. We can't. It's locked. Door will not budge. 
Okay, let's head further to the south. We're going to keep on slowing to a walk, just so that we can try and... Oh no. Get our breath under control. That's trouble. A lot of trouble. We get a deranged axe man charging towards us, leading just a whole troop of dead our direction. Our options are starting to become limited. We're not completely without choice yet. We're going to try and see if we can use this to our advantage. This pit here. We're just going to run between them as the deranged axe man catches them. The axe digging into his chest. Dylan was dying for a drink and now it seems he might be dead altogether. But I'm not going to give up. Not just yet. Judo might just save his life. We drop the wrench to the ground. Let's make sure that Judo is selected. It is. Let's see if we can throw this axe man. Not much of a chance. I didn't think so. And with no stamina, there is no running. That withdrawal hitting us really threw us off course. There is nothing that can be done. The axe beats down again and again. And Dylan Fan's story comes to an end. His last words, I just wanted to drink. Farewell, our mysterious, illiterate lab technician. The dead continue to flock towards him, falling down one by one into the pit as the deranged axeman guards his kill. But the other dead of the town, they find him soon enough. Perhaps he will join them if there's anything left. But our challenge, our challenge does not end with Dylan. Oh no, he was not the only survivor at that plant. We now find ourselves in the shoes of Reuben Dong, a medical resident who has proficiencies in burn care, physiology, the principles of biology, wound care, and an expert level of wound care. He is 50 years of age and he's feeling just fine. As fine as you can be in the cataclysm. He's rocking a super cool brown mohawk and he has animal empathy, a heat tolerance, and he's tough. It takes a lot to bring Reuben down. He gets a 20% bonus to all of his hit points. And then finally, MD, you were just through with the administrative formalities of your residency when the cataclysm struck. Your hospital was overrun and evacuated, but there's always work for a good doctor. And that work led him here, to this power plant. Whoever he was here to treat, well, that's the least of his concerns now. Unfortunately for us, Ruben's only skills are in wound care. He has a zero in every other skill. <laughs> So, let's see if we can put those skills to the test, eh? Right, Reuben. You are unfamiliar with the place that you're in. Let's see what you actually have on you right now. You've got your phone, you've got some aspirin, and some clean water, and you also have a first aid box. A whole ass box, which I'm imagining, yeah, has a lot of stuff in it. Okay. He's also wearing a doctor's badge. He has his lab coat on. Medical gloves, some safety glasses. He has a stethoscope around his neck. And we've got a wristwatch. It's how we know what time it is. And it's 8 a.m. on day 61, which is exactly when we picked up our story with Dylan. However, Dylan was in a different part of this building. But this this is the same building. This is the same plant. So yeah, we won't be going the exact same route. We'll be trying to find another way out of this place. And maybe, just maybe, it'll make sense for us to try and acquire a few things before we leave. That lumber mill might have a number of good supplies for us. But first of all, we need to figure out how we are going to survive in here. Let's see if we can find protection. We do have our hearing going for us this time. Dylan was hard of hearing, and I didn't really notice just how much that was affecting us until, well, you know. Yeah, it looks like we're actually in a very similar position <laughs> to what we were in with Dylan, and we can see the blood that he left behind. So this is 100% the same world, the same things that Dylan has picked up and moved and the things that he's killed. That's all happened. We have not been over to the west yet, though, have we? No. 
I'm half tempted to see what will happen if we just try and make our way down here. Oh boy. Well, you were hiding the darkness, weren't you? A feral mechanic throws a rock in our direction, causing quite a fright. Yeah, okay. We're running. Let's leave that mechanic behind. We're going to have to try and get into darkness. We're going to have to try and lose him now, as we do not have a weapon to our name. Let's just keep on moving. Okay, we're hearing some movement in here. That's got to be the same mechanic, right? <laughs> what was he doing there? Oh boy, and there's something coming for us from the darkness. Ah, another rock? Man, those rocks are hitting for hard. Nine damage. Okay, we take off at a run. We need to put more distance between us and that maniac. This is fine. This is fine. Okay. There, stairs. Let's take them. What's the worst that could happen? We hear a clang over to the east. Okay, there is an open door. Let's get that closed maybe. Let's peek first of all and see what's through there. We can't tell. Oh, come on. Another rock. And I don't think closing the door is going to make much of a difference. No, it's not. <laughs> These mechanics with their rocks. you got to be kidding me. Well, this area is very, very less up, which that's a problem. We're going to be running out of breath in just a moment. But we do have some darkness here. We can work with that. Let's slow to a walk. See if we can just move between these snaking wires. They don't know where we are. Not right now. Oh, come on. Just go away, mechanic. Go away. Leave us be. <laughs> we can't make our way over towards the west. The doors are closed. They're locked. That ain't gonna work for us. How much of a weapon is this box, huh? <laughs> Not a weapon at all. Now, do we have to be carrying it? Not necessarily. We can just take the things that we need out of there. The bandages, the tape. We'll take the scissors, the aspirin, the antiseptic, the saline solution that can stay behind. And the adhesive bandages, well, they can stay as well. We are going to apply that bandage to ourselves. It's going to be great because we're very good at wound care. We've seen a technician. That's fine. It's okay. It's not close to us. Okay. We need our breath back. I'm just going to be cautiously waiting here. Oh, we just lost sight of them. Hang on. We lost sight of them. The light was activated. It must be motion sensor or, or something. But the light is off now. That, that actually works out quite well for us. So we can just navigate along the wall here. Let's, let's get our breath back first of all. Okay, so we're going to turn on safe mode. And we're just going to wait until we catch our breath. There we go. Okay, we're doing all right here, Ruben. Mr. Dong. Well, his name is actually Dong Ruben. So we could go with Dong. But I feel like saying Dong constantly. Let, let's stick with Ruben for now. And Ruben, we're going to knock back two of those aspirin as we start to make our way down here now he doesn't have a light step he is going to be making a little bit more noise when he moves we can see the sound that he's making is five if we go to a crouch okay pretty much nothing hard to tell but moving while crouched is very slow we need to be wary of that something can sneak up on us rather quickly it doesn't look like there's any way down here other than if we go straight past our friends. So let's not do that for now. We're going to go back up here and we're going to try and see if we can make our way along the northern path. Like this. Okay. Another locked door. Great. Wonderful. Amazing. Okay. Well, we got that open. Let's close that door. Let's close that window. We're sneaking here. This is fine. What do we got? We got some duct tape. We've got a battery. A wrapped radiation badge. That's what we were looking for before. Okay, now, now Ruben will firmly be aware of the dangers of being inside a plant like this and having it go offline. Um, we should be able to wear it. Or maybe in this case, we're just going to have to activate it. So this is a badge that detects radiation dosage. It is sealed in a radiation blocking bag. To use it, we remove it from the bag. So over time, if it changes color, it means that we have been um, exposed to radiation. So what we can do is I believe we can just activate it or look at it. Oh, now we can wear it. Okay, there we go. 
Ah, right, down the bottom here we can see that the strip on the badge is green. That should change colour, I believe, up through to like red and then black. If it's black, it means that we're dead. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> so, yeah, let's hope not. Let, let's, let's really hope not. Medium disposable battery, we can fit that in our coat for now. Let's take it and we'll see what else is here. Heavy duty flashlight and a reciprocating saw. I mean, we, we can't, we, we can't, we can't use that as a weapon. It's got a good metal sawing, cut metal. I wonder if we could potentially cut through metal doors with it. I honestly, I don't know. We can't fit the flashlight in any of our pockets. That's unfortunate. We'll just check to see what else we've got here. These work gloves might be better than the medical gloves that we're wearing at the moment. So we're going to check. The encumbrances are a bit high. The protection is nice though. I think we're just going to take them for now. We will put them on. We might be able to wear them with our medical gloves. It seems like we're able to. We're at 21 encumbrance on our hands at the moment. I'm not looking at getting in a fight, so just having the extra protection there I think is going to be worth it. Yeah, and now we just need to figure out how we can fit some of this other stuff on us at the moment. Because, uh, yeah, I want that flashlight. And so it's not a weight problem that we're running into, it's a volume issue. Or actually, you know what, it's probably that the flashlight is just too big. At the very least, we should take whatever tools that we can. The pliers, we'll even take the duct tape. It's not going to put us over weight. And if you have a look here, we can see our badge. It's up the top. We're in the green, so we're okay. If it changes, however, then we... Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, we know we're in trouble. The second that we open this door here, this extremely resilient steel door, it changed to blue. Immediately. Okay. Blue. So we've been exposed to radiation. We know that much. And we're hearing noises from over here. Great. Wonderful. Grand. Okay. Oh, yep. That's a hazmat zombie. Okay. Uh, let's just go back to a regular walk now. We want to make sure that we're staying at least a little bit distance away from you. We need to get out of this place as soon as we can. Or at the very least, we need to be off of this level. I don't know if it's bad up the top. I, I don't know. We've got a firefighter zombie here as well. Okay. Wonderful. I think we're just going to have to go up. Back up. And let's just go back to a walk. We're going to flash our light. Flash the flashlight. We've got a window over here. That is an office. I don't know if that's one that Dylan had been into or not though. I think maybe? Was Dylan's way out of here the only way? I don't know. I don't know the answer to that question. But I'm keeping my eyes on that radiation badge now because I am most certainly concerned. We hear a piercing wail. And we can see a hazmat zombie. I think down the bottom from us at the moment. Let's see. Yep. Just hanging out down there. Oh, but there's one up here as well. How wonderful. We're going to take off at a run, and we really need to hope that there is nothing waiting for us at the end. Oh, there is. There is. That's a firefighter zombie. We need to try and dodge past it. Okay, that is a narrow, narrow escape there. Okay. Let's just keep on moving. We don't have a way in there. Window? Yes, we do. Oh, come on. <laughs> come on. Catch us a break. Get that door closed. Okay. Oh, boy. We've got pliers. We've got a masonry saw in there. Um, again, not sure if we can use it as... It does have a sweeping attack. <laughs> it has some armor piercing to it. It has a range of four techniques when wielded. Could we? A construction tool used for cutting through concrete or other surfaces. Can we just cut through the walls? I think maybe, yeah. Using this item will cause it to turn on, turning it into a very powerful but unwieldy melee weapon or a terrible chainsaw. Okay, 450 charges of gasoline. You know what? I, th I think we're going to have to go for it. Um, we can't keep our flashlight though because it's just too big. We do have the smartphone that we can use still. That can give us a tiny bit of light. Um, okay, so we're, we're wielding the masonry saw at the moment. Um, I don't want to use it, but if we have to, we will. And maybe, just maybe, we can use that to carve a hole in 
one of the walls and then be able to get out that way. Um, but that ain't, that ain't going to be easy. No siree. Okay. Um, we also want to be trying to get our breath back here. So I think we're going to turn on safe mode and we are just going to try and wait until we catch our breath. We hear shuffling. Okay. Shuffling over there. That's, that's totally fine. This is okay. All right. Well, let's, let's make our way on over. We can get a little bit more gasoline. I don't think we're just going to be able to take gas from this excavator though. It's still just wild to see this up here. Uh, it runs on diesel. Could we use this to try and run a few things over? I mean, maybe. Could we... Hmm, hmm, I don't know. Um, we do have another building over here, though. I want to check it out. Is it a soldering iron? It is. Doesn't fit in our pockets, though. We've got a talking doll down here and a fire extinguisher. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. So... I'm thinking about the bottom of this place now. If we can get down there, and if we can saw at the wall, we'd have an out. But I think it's going to take a little while for that to happen. And we also need a way down. Okay, we've got stairs midway, but there's also an angry mechanic out on the walls as well, so that's not going to help us. Okay, let's just carry on in the dark. We've got safe mode on. If we run into anything terrible, we'll be warned. Come on. Okay. Easy does it. Those are stairs down. Let's take them. Okay. We're going to go to the corner here. I, I'm trying to figure out what wall we want to try and carve through here. Or if we can even do that. Because the pipe's stopping us from getting to those walls. Surely the pipe can't run the whole way along. Okay, well, one way or the other, we're going to find out, aren't we? And what sucks is that this is the level that we got our initial radiation dosage from. Come on, pipe. Are you really everywhere? It's looking like it at this stage. I hate that. Yup. God damn it. Okay. Well, that's... That's great. That's just super... Superb. <laughs> not good. Not good. I think, I honestly think that pipe is going to be everywhere down here. It can't, it, okay, it can't be everywhere. But I don't want to use the saw to just cut through one wall and have it lead to nothing. That needs to be our way out. So, we're just going to navigate around. Hope for the goddamn best. We don't have a light source anymore. So that's not great. And we could be walking into a, a reactor, for all I know at this point. We've got, like, blast walls here. Which makes me think that it's probably for a reactor. We could try and kill a hazmat zombie with our saw. Would that give us what we need to be able to get out of here, though? It could maybe give us a card. That would help. Let's activate the saw. We're going to turn that on. It is active. So, it did say that it has range. Range four. I... I... Yeah, that didn't work. That that did not work, and we've been grabbed. Okay. I don't like that idea. Let's slam that shot. That hurt a lot. That hurt a lot. That is not an option. Let's turn this off. Thank you, Masonry Saw. You did not help us at all. <laughs> Okay. Well, we answered that question, didn't we? So, let's stick to the outside here. Keep on keeping on. But I think it's going to be exactly the same. Is this the whole length of the structure? It's certainly seeming that way. Another staircase set up. Okay, and we've run into a technician. Right at the other end of the building. So, I think we're going to have to go back up. <laughs> we'll run away. Turn that safe mode back on. And let's look up here. Okay. Do we have an angry, feral man around here somewhere? I don't know. We've got a pigeon. Oh boy. Well, we have safe mode on. 
We were going to keep on making our way around the outskirts of the building. Okay, we spotted a technician down below, down beneath us, in the darkness. What else are we spotting there? I am not sure. But I think, I think that's part of the railway down there. Okay, so we need to get down there. Do we have another staircase on this side? Our radiation badge has just gone to yellow. This is very bad. Okay, we've got a staircase. Alright, I think we've got a way out. Yup. We're gonna drop this masonry saw right now. We need medication. We are dealing with a significant radiation dosage now. Which meant that Dylan probably had the same or even a greater level affecting him. <laughs> Ruben Dong has made it outside. A similar position to what Dylan was in at the start of today's episode. Thankfully for Mr. Dong, he isn't going to be dealing with alcohol withdrawals. He is, however, going to be dealing with radiation poisoning. The extent of how bad that is, we don't know just yet. But he is a doctor, and we do have a hope that he will be able to treat it. That lumber mill is beckoning. They will have first aid supplies there, but whether they have radiation treatment, that might be a bit of a stretch, even if it is close to this plant. We might have better luck at one of the hazardous waste sarcophagi. But that is all for the future. For now, Ruben Dong, sorry, Dr. Ruben Dong, or just Dr. Dong, that works too, has made it out. Surprisingly, in a similar condition to Dylan, Ruben's torso is looking rough. That masonry saw was a tough weapon to wield. But now with his hands free, he can see to those bruises just as soon as he escapes that zombie technician and the rest of this plant. Legionnaires, I ask you, if you enjoyed today's episode, deaths aside, please do consider leaving a comment or a like to let me know if you enjoyed the show. As for now, I have been Rykon. You have all been awesome. And until next time, stay tuned. <laughs>